Hello, and welcome back to the office. Bet you thought we weren't going to be here for a while. I'm Dr. Wigo, and today is my review of the Mac Studio, sitting back over here in the corner where the PC used to be. Yes, I'm finally rid of the PC. I never have to look at Windows again, and I'm very happy. So this is technically a review, but I'm not a professional reviewer. Although I was 40 years ago, but that was in magazines and it was a whole nother world. I'm just a guy who likes technology and buys stuff and, and makes videos about it. But to satisfy you people, I actually ran benchmarks and stuff, which we will now go over and I'll show you how this thing has been performing. First, I'll tell you about getting it all set up and everything. So that'll be the story part of the video. I always have a story. You can skip on past that. And then we'll get straight into the benchmarks where I will, I geek bench and Puget bench and the blender. I, I did the ones that the people asked for in the comments on the first impressions of the Mac studio. And then I'll wrap it up and talk about why I love it. And it's my only computer. Well, not my only computer. There's a Mac mini back over there too, but it'll be my main computer from now on. And I'm very happy about it. And I'll show you why in a minute. First, let's talk about getting this whole thing set up. You saw the pictures and I'll probably throw one up on the screen of what a mess it was when I brought it down here for the first impressions video. It was ugly. Well, you, you just saw, I think. But I went through hell and back trying to get rid of the PC, getting all my files off and moved over to the Mac and, and then cleaning it up so I could give it away. Windows sucks. Let me just go on record for that. But I finally got that all taken care of. And then I had to pull all this stuff out and the cables and everything and, and dust. Oh, there was so much dust back there. But I got it all cleaned up. Well, kind of cleaned up. There's still wires everywhere because there's like, I don't know, 20 things attached to that Mac Studio. Because everything that used to be attached to the PC is now attached to the Mac Studio, plus all the drive enclosures and other stuff. As you can see over here, I, I'm, I'm using all six Thunderbolt ports. And I've got the OWC hub and the Avanki dock also with uh, many things plugged into them. So there's just a little mess of wires back there, but mostly it's hidden because it's up under that little riser thing. I also didn't mention my first impressions videos. When I first set up the Mac Studio, I used the trackpad because I thought I was going to use that with the Mac Studio. I keep my dock over on the left so that, you know, the upper left corner is the, you know, the menu and the Apple. And then I had the dock going down because that's the way I had it in Windows. It's better for my OLED monitor to not get stuff burned in at the bottom. But when I used the trackpad, when I'd go over and the dock would, you know, do his little magnify thing, it would freeze for like up to five, even 10 seconds and then start working again. Well, I said, well, well, it's the trackpad. So I put the magic mouse on it. Same thing. Moved, moved the dock to the bottom. Everything was fine. Ran the the test that I showed in the last video, which by the way, I will link up here so you can go see my first impressions and unboxing. But then after that, I went back and moved it back over to the left side and it's worked fine ever since. So it was a fluke. I just mentioned it because it happened and you never know with Apple, but it, it works now. I'm happy. I also learned something very important because in order to get all this set up, I pulled everything, disconnected everything, got a big pile of cables over here and a pile of drives over there. And, and then I hooked everything back up one by one. And then I was doing some stuff and I'm going, the Samsung 990 Pro is not performing up to par. And I ran this speed test and it was like half the speed. And I'm going, well, what, what's going on? Not all Thunderbolt cables are created equal. When I was hooking everything back up, I used a Thunderbolt cable to connect the enclosure with the Samsung in it to the studio, but it wasn't a Thunderbolt 5 cable. Makes a big difference. Like I said, it was half the speed. Once I put a Thunderbolt 5 cable on it, they got to have the num little number five, except the Trablit. For some reason, they didn't put the little five on there, but it says Trablit, so I know that one's also. I've ordered a bunch more from Amazon because I don't want to ever have that happen again. But I, after I got everything working, it's been great. And I moved my Insta360 Link webcam, which is on top of my monitor up there, over to the Mac Studio from the PC and my Elgato... Wave 3 microphone. So now I have my old setup. I have my headphones over here coming out of the PreSonus. Yeah, I've got the, Pre well, I already had the PreSonus hooked up to the Mini. Now I've got it hooked up to the studio. So 
So I've got my audio interface. I, I, I'm all set and everything's working great. I mean, there's just tons of things on there and just Apple doesn't miss a beat. You just plug things in. Oh, another little problem. The HP printer, which I will link that video down below, which I had all these horrible problems with hooking up to Windows. Well, when I hooked up to the Mac, it just worked once. And then the next time I went to use it, they had an expired certificate and all this nonsense. And I went, I'm still working on that problem. I'll get it figured out. And another thing, I mentioned I had another dock to unbox and show off in the future, but I need it because there's so much stuff under here. I'm going to move a bunch of it across onto this other table next to my desk over here, which I'm not going to show you because it's that's where the mess went. I just moved it off of this desk over there. I'm going to put a dock over there and that's where I can hook the USB printer up. I think the problem was because the USB wasn't working. So I'm going to hook that up and I can put a bunch of the drives over there. Not the Thunderbolt 5. They need to go be going straight in. But the Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, all those kind of drives, I can put on that desk over there and get them out from under there. So it'll clean up my setup. There may be another video in it. Probably not. That's not worth making a video about. So that's the set story. Now let's go to the benchmarks. Come with me. The first benchmark I ran was Geekbench 6. And here you can see the results for the M3 Ultra Mac Studio. See, it says down here and then down here, 96 gigabytes. And my single core score was 3218 and my multi-core score was 27,000. I don't know what any of these numbers mean, but then I reran it on the Mac mini. The single core score is better, but we knew that because the M4 has a faster cores than the M3. But the multi-core score was down a little. In fact, wait, I hear here I have a comparison. So you can see that the Mac mini has a higher single core score, but a lower multi-core score, but the multi-core score here, the Mac mini has 14 cores and the Mac studio has 32. And as far as I can tell, 32 is more than double 14, but it's nowhere near double. In fact, that's like what? 20, 25% faster. It's a bit disconcerting. I also did the GPUs. So on the Mac mini, I got a, a metal compute score of 111,000 and on the Mac Studio 258,000. Now that makes sense because that's like what 20 cores versus 60, 80, 80 cores. So it's more than double. Then I ran Puget Bench, which for DaVinci Resolve, we already know DaVinci Resolve works great because of my initial testing, which was in the first video, which again will be linked below and up in the corner. Yeah, this chart. You can see the render speeds in DaVinci Resolve of a 12 minute 4K 30 video went from almost 10 minutes for a 12 minute video on the Mac Mini M4 to the Pro. It drops to nine minutes and 11 seconds. Not much better on my old PC, which has moved on six minutes, 47 seconds. The MacBook Pro M3 Max was six minutes, 30 seconds. The M3 Ultra was a minute and 58 seconds. I was really happy. Until I watched Luke Miani's video, which I will link down below. This is Final Cut Pro, not DaVinci Resolve. But if you look at the bottom of the chart, the 80 core M3 Ultra was only 10 seconds faster than the 60 core GPU in the M3 Ultra. So I paid an extra $1,500 for those extra 20 cores. And if DaVinci Resolve is the same as Final Cut Pro on export, well then I wasted $1,500 because you know, 10 seconds over five minutes. Like that's a very tiny, it's not a tiny percent, but it's a very small percent. But the M4 Max was nine minutes and 45 seconds. So the $2,000 upgrade to get from the M4 Max to the M3 Ultra gets you almost twice as fast, but apparently moving up to the 80 cores only gets you about 10 more seconds. Now in Final Cut Pro, I don't know what the results are going to be like in DaVinci Resolve and I can't test it because I don't have an M3 Ultra with 60 cores and I never will because I got the best one and it's working great. And you can see in the, from the Puget Bench results again that the overall score is like over 50% higher for the Ultra over the Mac Mini. This is the M4 Pro Mac Mini. If you go to the Puget Bench website and ask to see comparisons, Okay, so I got 14.699 and here for 5090s, yell if you see one go by that's higher than 14.699. Oh wait, there's one, 16.956. That's a 5090 
on a Threadripper 7970X with 32 cores. But anyway, I'm in the ballpark and a lot of these are lower. Wait, here's another one with a Threadripper that's 16, 17. Okay, 50, 90 is faster. But what's that percentage? Well, let me get up my calculator. 17 to 17, there we go. 17% faster. So if you buy a Threadripper system with a 5090, which by the way is going to cost more than this guy, than the Mac Studio M3 Ultra, because, well, especially now, for I think 5090s are going for like double their list price, so they're like $4,000 just for the graphics card, and then of course you need the CPU and all this other stuff. I'm glad I didn't go with a PC with a 5090. I'm glad I went with the Mac Studio instead, and it's just so much better. Because someone asked in the comments. So my, my benchmark score in Blender was 829. This is CPU. See, I'm in the top 33%. Yeah, not that impressive. But, so 829. But the Mini was only getting 396. So more than double on Blender for the Mac Studio over the Mac Mini. But that's CPU. If you go to Metal... According to this, I'm in the top 0%. This is the fastest one that has been uploaded to opendata.blender.org. The fastest one. So that's a pretty good score. And then, of course, on the Mini, it was a third of that. Yeah, pretty much a third of that. 25,550. Whoever asked about Blender, there's your answer. Somebody asked if, if in DaVinci Resolve, if you had... Now, this clip if you can see over here change speed they said a 50 percent clip a 50 percent speed on a clip and then down here under motion estimation choose speed warp better and it performs flawlessly it's 29.97 i don't know if this answers your question but apparently we can handle the speed warp function just fine so those are the benchmarks, and again, I'm, I'm no expert. But it seems plenty fast to me. It stacks up very well. Yes, a 5090 with a thread ripper is faster. 17% faster? For a machine that probably costs eight or $9,000? I'll live with it. I've been editing my videos, including the one about the M3, and then the one about the Ivanki, and they both rendered really fast and think I think I put the render times actually in the description of the videos so y'all would know it's a beast for DaVinci Resolve now I don't do a lot of the weird stuff and Gaussian blurs and all that stuff that apparently can bring DaVinci Resolve to its knees on most computers so I don't know for the stuff I do it is just it is snappy as hell I mean for the editing process the Mac Mini was snappy as hell this is just as snappy but now this renders way faster. On the, on my PC with the 3090, it was rendering about half a reel. So a 12 minute video would take, what, about six minutes, six and a half minutes. And this is two minutes. I am happy as a clam. I got everything working. I'm starting to find new things and watch videos about how to use the Mac. I will do a video about moving from PC to Mac all the things I've learned that could help someone who's thinking about doing it, especially after seeing these kind of results and going, wait, for $4,000, according to Luke Miani's data, you don't really need those extra 20 cores, which cost $1,500. If you're just doing video editing, you can get by with the $4,000 one. So for $4,000, you get a heck of a computer that'll do almost anything you want. My review is two thumbs up. If I had more thumbs, I'd put them up too, because this is like one of the best things I've ever, ever had. Certainly the best computer I've ever owned. Maybe one of the best things I've ever owned. Now all these external drives, which you have to buy because you can't do the upgrade because Apple charges way too much for the internal storage, so you have to get the external SSDs and or enclosures. Well, then you got all these things hanging out like I have back over there. You can see them sitting up on top and down below, and they're, they're just... There's more be hiding behind the monitor. They're just everywhere. It's ridiculous. So I need a NAS, a network attached storage. And that's going to be the video hopefully next week because I have bought one and it's here, but I'm waiting for the drives that I need in order to get it up and running. Come back next week. Watch an idiot try to install a NAS. I bought one that's almost idiot proof. Almost. We'll see. So hopefully it's going to work just fine, but... Eh. 
So that's what you have to look forward to. Plus, there's another Thunderbolt 5 dock, uh, the Kensington, that I also bought that I'm going to use. I'll either put that or the OWC hub over on the table over there, which I won't show you because it's filthy. But that's what's coming up. Subscribe. Come on back. I got lots of stuff I'm going to do with this thing, including put an NAS on it with 10 gigabit Ethernet. The NAS is going to be more than one video because there's going to be the unboxing and setup and then there'll be more down the road because how to get it working and upgrading it and all that kind of stuff. There's lots of stuff coming. If you're thinking about a, a Max, M3 Max Studio, yes, but you may be able to get by with the 60 core M3 Ultra or even the M4 Max if video editing isn't your thing. But now I didn't run benchmarks on LLMs and that kind of stuff. And that's where this thing really shines. It's amazing at running AI stuff in, in one box, not with a stack of GPU cards. There are other videos on YouTube about that. Go, go find those. You'll enjoy them if that's what you're into. So that's it for today. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time, hopefully with the NAS. I got to go start... Working on that, figuring out where it's going to go. I think it's going to go over there too, and that means I got to clean that desk off over there. So thanks for staying to the end. Bye bye.